Hey friends, how are you? How's it going? Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Welcome to the fifth episode of IELTS podcast. How are you, Mehdi? I'm fantastic. It's great to be here with you, my friend. And uh, hello to everyone okay. who's watching this podcast. Yeah, and I'm really okay. happy that Let's we are this. Uh, keeping this video podcast. I hope we can uh, make more videos like that. Um, okay, so we are focusing on the first test of Cambridge 18. Uh, could you please read the question? Yes, the question says that the most important aim of science should be to improve people's lives. To what extent do you agree with this statement? This is a classical agree-disagree statement. And uh, as I said before, I would like to highlight this. When it says to what extent, I just want to remind everyone that you have to mention the, the adverb. Is it partially or completely? Do you agree? Uh, yeah, sure. And uh, personally speaking, I feel this question is kind of difficult because it's asking us a, an important philosophical question and opinions are divided about uh, this topic. What do you think about the topic itself? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I don't know about you, but I'm a scientist myself. Mm -hmm. uh, my first degree is Master of Science in Organic Chemistry. I got it from Sharif University of Technology. So I'm a chemist. Mm -hmm. And then I just switched to English. So from the perspective of a scientist, I completely disagree with the statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really enlightening to see your essay mm -hmm. with... Uh, completely mm -hmm. different viewpoint that's so interesting mm -hmm. and uh yeah i think as you said it's philosophical and people have uh, different opinions about it okay yeah and i decided to go for easy ideas instead of my own ideas so i decided to pick up the ideas i can develop so that's why i decided to entirely agree so what is your idea like forget about uh, being easy or difficult I, I, I just, what do you really think yeah. about this what is the the okay. most important aim of science in your opinion yeah outside the world of IELTS I would partially agree with this idea and yeah I right. would tend to say that the yeah, scientists should be given this freedom to purely focus on the science and forget about the reason or any kinds of objectives but on the other hand uh, we can say that having this aim will give them uh, clear perspectives and clear goals and they can perhaps focus on what they're doing better right so okay. let's let's get to it okay so let's have a look at my introduction I'm just going to uh, read it uh, it is said that the improvement of people's lives uh, should be the number one priority of science I completely agree with this idea as it can provide scientists with a clearer roadmap and help the public understand the importance of science. And I believe well, that, in my opinion, uh, it is, yeah, uh, yeah sorry, it is beautifully written because um, I think you paraphrase the topic really, really well mm -hmm. to improve people's lives, turn to improvement of people's lives. That's really clearly paraphrased mm -hmm. and number one priority is also beautiful because that's the most important thing so the the fact that you came up with the word priority and you use it in this way that's really great mm -hmm. and and to the point and and it's interesting when you use this way later it gives you more freedom to use more synonyms of important mm -hmm. yeah because you just didn't use it here that was beautiful and also a clear viewpoint completely agree your point is clear. You use provide somebody with something. That's great. A great collocation for provide. Also, the clearer roadmap. That's incredible. Really, really good. That public understand. And instead of people, again, you use the word public, which is a wonderful paraphrase. Well done, my friend. Okay. And personally, I prefer uh, to take a one-sided answer because it's safer. I'm not going to say that... Yeah. Having a balanced view is wrong. I'm just going to say it's safer to entirely agree or disagree. Okay, so let's move on to my first body paragraph. I'm just going to highlight it. Uh, to begin with, improving the lives of people as the principal goal can give scientists more precise guidance. Obstacles to improving people's uh, living can represent scientists' existing problems and the demands of the public. Health-related issues, such as some chronic diseases, for example, can help scientists spot the problems and look for ways to address them. 
uh, they can have more transparent areas to do their research as they know more details about their case studies and the outcomes they should achieve. Without this key objective, scientists might struggle to find where to start their studies. That's that's brilliant. But first things first, instead of might here, don't you think it might be better that we just get rid of it completely and we use the verb itself, like scientist struggle? Mm -hmm. I think if we don't use that, it it shows more strength like mm. it's kind of stronger and more powerful because you completely agree that's just a suggestion what do you think so yeah so what happens if you yeah, get rid of that, that already conveys the message kind of stronger yeah because i you agree I, yeah i've already justified my point so it's a good idea to forget about might and, and give a stronger opinion yeah the rest is absolutely perfect and i really like like this is i would say one of the characteristics of your writing they can easily be followed sentences roll over and it's really beautiful to you like the way i think to everyone else watching this that's a superb example of how the sentences are linked and incredible coherence and cohesion one thing leads to the next thing and it's easy to follow from the beginning to the end all the way through and i just let you highlight the words but i just want to say okay. tip to the hat <laughs> yeah. beautifully written my Great friend to hear that and yeah precise guidance can be a nice collocation obstacles to improving people's living i would go for existing problems and uh, demands of the public yeah, absolutely uh, health, health related issues chronic diseases mm -hmm. spot the problems like this as you said always say it's seemingly simple words mm -hmm. spot the problem mm -hmm. instead of like i don't know seeing the problem the, just that single word increases i think uh, your lexical resource. The, the less common version yeah, of see the problem. Mm. Also, transparent areas. I, I would go. I would go for that. Yeah. But the outcomes they should achieve, and it's a simple college. And in terms style. of, in terms of grammar, mm -hmm. um, I think the last sentence is also a good example of a complex grammar. You started the sentence without this key objective something what, what do you call this in grammar uh, it, it's, it's, it's a complex grammar right yeah uh, I, I would call it a kind of reduction yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. it's beautiful right here mm -hmm. okay wonderful my friend great thank you very much so let's move on to my second main idea uh, so let me highlight it Prioritizing the lives of people as the main uh, goal of science can also help the public appreciate the role of science better. Discoveries which can extend people's life, life expectancy and medicines to treat non-curable diseases can help people grasp the importance of science. These tangible outcomes can gain the trust of a larger number of people to rely on science to find the most practical solutions to their problems. This can bring more respect and popularity for scientists and justify the public to allocate more time and money to new scientific research. As a result of this widespread support, scientists can have a greater degree of flexibility to conduct further studies and ex examinations. Beautiful. Now, something that caught my attention is the word justify. And um, I wanted to say, can we say like... Uh, we can use the word convince mm -hmm. or persuade mm -hmm. or tempt. Uh, are you, this is just like, uh, I'm, I'm spitballing here. What do you think, like, what would happen if we use one of these instead of justify? Yeah, what do you think uh, I guess happens they have to the sentence? more positive connotation. Right. So, but, but justify. So, but, uh, do you think they're valid? Like, if you use them here, they're okay together with justify? Uh, so can yeah no 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 because for example convince persuade and tempt for example advertising is trying to persuade people to buy something they don't exactly. need exactly so yeah, this, this is what i wanted wrong. to hear fantastic so justify works best here mm. fantastic um again if i may we can 
we can see how you further develop your mm-hmm. point. Uh, again, sentences are easy. And, and one thing that I realized is this one can also, mm-hmm. let me just make it like blue. I don't know if you use blue for or for what. This one is really good. Mm-hmm. Because I think in a very subtle manner, you're telling the readers, hey, guys, I'm moving to the next one. Mm-hmm. And it's really beautifully placed there. I think one of the things in band descriptors is that, like, it's effortless and you don't really see them. Am I right? What, what yeah, do you call that? it doesn't that? draw attention. For example, if you use Exactly. More over... That's the word. Yeah. That's the word. Great. great Marvelous. Job. And my conclusion... Uh, in the final analysis, choosing the improvement of uh, uh, choosing the improvement of the way people live as the major priority in the world of science uh, seems to be reasonable. It can bring clear targets for scientists and encourage the public to support and respect science more. One thing I realized is tangible outcomes and clear targets mm-hmm. somehow related, but again, beautifully paraphrased. Um, and again, the conclusion is completely to the point, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much for your feedback. And I can, uh, I think we can go for your writing. Thank you. Thank you. And it's interesting uh, uh, to re- remind our our audience, the viewers, lovely people, that this is interesting. We didn't know because we we just wrote it and we realized that our ideas are completely 180 degrees, you know, completely on two sides of uh, the spectrum, completely different. Um, I study this argued that the most significant goal of science should be the betterment um, in everyone's lives. I completely disagree with this viewpoint and believe that science should be revered and valued for its own sake, regardless of whether or not it benefits the public. Mm-hmm, great. Uh, you you've think? paraphrased the question, betterment in everyone's lives. It's great. And you're giving us a clear position. I completely disagree. That's fine. And you're giving us the titles of your main ideas. And we see a complex structure regardless uh, in this sample. Great. Everything is fine. Thank you. So let's take a look at the first, um, first body paragraph. Historically speaking, the most basic form of science, such as mathematics or astronomy, dates back thousands of years and has always been an inseparable part of human nature, providing us with a means to explain our surroundings and natural phenomena. It is the only reliable tool we have always had. Otherwise, we would still be in dark ages. What makes science different from religion is testability. Should we dispose of all scientific discoveries now, we still have the potential to arrive to the same point again, again, sometime in the future. But the same is not true for religion. Pure science has intrinsic value, and scientists must push the frontiers of science in every and all directions. When this is done properly, and for an extended period of time, then specialists of other disciplines, such as engineers and medical doctors, can find ways to improve people's lives. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Yeah, honestly speaking, while I was thinking about this question, I also thought about these ideas, but it was difficult for me to elaborate on these ideas. They seemed a little bit philosophical for me, so that's why I went for those ideas. But yeah, uh, I can see your reasons. You see, pure science has intrinsic value. I guess some philosophers believe that we shouldn't just uh, set some objectives for science. So they, they should find their own ways. And yeah, I have highlighted the good vocabularies. Mathematics, as astronomy are two types of science. Inseparable part of human nature means to explain our surroundings, testability, uh, intrinsic value, push the frontiers. You're capable of uh, giving us a wide range of uh, lexical resources, including collocations and uh, topic related uh, vocabulary. And I've highlighted a nice grammatical structure, should we dispose, which is a type of uh, inversion. Great. And we see 
And I think this one is also not bad. What makes science different? This mm. one is cleft yeah. structure. Can you elaborate on this, please, as well? Yeah. Uh, cleft structures are starting with what? Yeah, we have two types of cleft structures, WH cleft right. and IT cleft. Uh, uh, for example, instead of saying uh, we need uh, to buy some fruit, we can say what we need to buy is fruit. So we can exactly. simply uh, make our simple sentence complex. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. So I just uh, elaborated and explained more on the same thing in the next uh, body paragraph. Both of them are in the same direction. I said the reason why science should not be used principally for the well-being of people is that we have no idea which branch of science will ultimately become useful for us so as to develop it further. In other words, should we ignore some scientific disciplines, assuming there are uh, they are of no use for us? We practically limit our progress. And science, by definition, cannot be restricted. These seemingly irrelevant branches of science may be fundamental to an essential scientific discovery in the future. And now I've got three examples, one after another, to support this viewpoint. I said NASA, for example, first worked on wireless technology for headphones so as astronauts can use them without getting tangled up with wires while in space. And these are facts, by the way. Theoretical research in quantum and particle physics has led to new energy resources such as nuclear and solar energy. One point interesting here is research. Research is mainly uncountable, hence I use, hence the use of has, research has, because it's like uncountable. And finally, and pure biology and research into DNA structure paved the way to genetic engineering and biotechnology. I'm all ears, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. So we see very precise examples. So instead of saying that some research say, or saying that scientists are just coming up with some uh, fake uh, data, you're giving us precise examples to, to justify your ideas. And it was interesting for me, honestly speaking, you're telling us that we don't know what we are looking for, okay, and it's useless to set some objectives, so we should just uh, do some research, uh, and through trial and error, we can find out what we are looking for and what we need. Okay, interesting. But it was difficult for me to, to write and develop this idea. Okay, again, it was easier for me to say that public can understand science. It was easier for me to say that uh, science can gain more respect. Uh, we see great collocations, well-being of people. Uh, uh, you're, you're showing us your flexibility, scientific discipline, practically limit our progress, irrelevant uh, branches, seemingly irrelevant branches, great. Uh, <coughs> And some examples like uh, quantum particle physics, great DNA structure, genetic engineering, great. So you're capable of giving us a uh, precise vocabulary related to science. Well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, to sum up, I completely disagree with the idea that the most essential purpose of science should be making people's lives better. I believe that science has to develop naturally and limitlessly, and its use in our everyday life will eventually appear. Uh, one thing that's interesting here is the word appear. I, I, today I was talking in my class to people about appear. It's an intransitive verb, people. Some people say, will be appear. Have you, have you encountered these students? They say, will be appear or was appear. It's intransitive so it it doesn't take an object it can't be made passive just a quick note on that okay great and you again restated your position i completely disagree and we see a clear position throughout your essay fine great thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Much. thank it you nice. and uh, i would like to mention that we were both really busy this week yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, we made it. We yeah. made it. And uh, thank, thanks to you, uh, everyone. My dear friend Mohammed always pushes me to, to do this. You know, it's not easy. I always say, just like delivering a baby. It's hard. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> seriously, but task. you're doing a great job, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you everything. Thank you very much. Thank and you for this. guys, you can just write down your ideas in the comment section below. And hope to see you in the following episodes. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.